This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios in South Central Alaska, USA. Live and local, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on KVNT, 1020 a.m. and 92.5 FM. Your best source for morning news, traffic, and weather. Streaming live online at TomAndersonShow.com. Phone lines are open. Dial 907-357-5868. That's 357-5868. Politics and news from a guy who's made it happen. Your morning drive just got a whole lot better. Good morning, America. Here's Tom Anderson. Well, good morning. As we continue our historical journey here on the show, intermittently bringing you authors that highlight important nuances of our past, Regnery Publishing has a history category that I'm particularly interested in and have an affinity to, and I know a lot of you do as well. That's why we have Sylvia Foti on today and her book that just published yesterday, so you can purchase it online, and she'll explain how to do that. And then, of course, we'll make a YouTube video of this interview, and you can check in the description as well, and also podcasted at TomAndersonShow.com. The book is entitled The Nazi's Granddaughter, and Sylvia, I must tell you, I was particularly interested. I don't have as colorful a story as you, but my mother... Christiana departed a few years back from Germany, lived in Leipzig and also Berlin during World War II. And her dad, uh, like many German businessmen, was forced to join the German army and was killed shortly thereafter, was an ambulance driver on one of the Russian fronts and immediately killed. And of course, enraging my grandmother and my mom was too young to understand other than she lost her dad. It was a very, very sad time. And so in your case, Sylvia, with the Lithuanian connection, you have a a very powerful story. How are you this morning? I'm fine, Tom. Thanks. Good to be with you. Absolutely. Well, what made you decide to write a book of this nature? The very headline, The Nazi's Granddaughter, isn't necessarily endearing. And I figured, (laughs) especially from the Jewish side of things, people wouldn't be thrilled with what your grandpa did, what you discovered. And the fact that you are so transparent and raw and dialogue on it, most of us wouldn't have the courage to do that. We'd say, like your grandmother did, "Eh, maybe we overlook that and move on. You said, no way. I want to I want to highlight it and cover it. Now you have a book as of yesterday that's global. So what made you decide to actually fiercely dialogue and assiduously go through this story? Because that took a lot of courage. Thanks. Yeah, it started um, in the year 2000. My mother was uh, essentially on her deathbed. And before that, she had been working on a book about her father, like my grandfather, for about 40 years, and all we knew, or all I knew, was that uh, he was this wonderful World War II uh, hero in Lithuania, that he fought against the communists. I knew he was in a KGB prison uh, and tortured and then eventually executed at the age of 36 for fighting against the communists, and so he died a martyr for Lithuania's freedom, and he fought, uh, he led two rebellions against the communists, one in 1941 and another one in 1945. The first one he won, the second one he lost. And, I mean, his story just goes on and on. I heard that um, he was in a Nazi concentration camp for two years. And so, I mean, he's lived through it all, and he was just this wonderful, legendary hero that uh, survived and had a lot of courage and bravery in fighting against the communists. So when my mom, on her deathbed, asked her, asked me to take over the writing of the story because she realized she no longer could do it, I had said yes. And um, at the time, I had been a journalist. Now I'm a high school English teacher. But, um, you know, I thought I was just going to write this rather quiet story, you know, about a man who uh, was this World War II hero who fought against the communists, and, and I thought it would be, you know, kind of a rather small circle book. But uh, that very same year, 
um, I visited the school named after my grandfather. He's got a school named after him. He's got streets named after him. He's got plaques on walls in Lithuania and of big buildings. And uh, in the school named after him, um, I was talking to the director, and I asked him, I said, how did you decide to name the school after Jonas Noreka? And he said, well, you know, before we had this horrible Russian name because Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union from World War II to 1990. And then uh, after it got its independence, he said, uh, we wanted a good patriotic Lithuanian name finally. And so your grandfather was born in this town, and he's been such a magnificent hero that it was just a natural uh, that we picked his name. There really was no contest. And I said, okay, I thought that would be the end of the story. But then he pulls me to the side, and he says, but you know, I got a lot of grief over naming the school after your grandfather. And I said, grief from who? And he said, the Jews. And I said, what could the Jews possibly say about my grandfather? And he said, he was accused of killing Jews. Oh, wow. And you're like, wait, that, that's a m- momentous pause in someone's life when you hear that. And I bet you had to cogitate for a second and say, oh, wait, what? What's going on? Yeah. Twilight Zone. My, my, my grandfather's a he. And I mentioned that your grandmother said, don't write the book. It was your mom I- initially. And, and, and you corrected me. Thank you. And with regard to your grandfather, I mean, you're talking about the highest Lithuanian uh, medals of honor and everything. This guy is perceived as a mensch. It's eponymous, his name, but so much. So what did you do from there? Did you say something to him? Like, please clarify. What do you mean? I just um, almost fainted, like I I couldn't believe it, and I needed to sit down and on a chair. And he could tell I was, you know, visibly upset. And he he said he said to me, "But don't worry about it. It's just an, it's it's old history. It's not true. It's just communist propaganda." And uh, this is one thing that Lithuanians do. Whenever we hear something we don't like, it's always communist propaganda. And <laughs> so uh, this is what I. What I began to believe myself, I came back to Chicago, and I started talking to people here, and, and everybody in the community says, no, it's not true. It is just communist propaganda. You don't really have to make that part of your book. Don't worry about it. But, um, you know, my background as a journalist, you know, I already knew that I couldn't just ignore it. Like, I would have to address it somehow. And so um, my, my plan was to exonerate him and prove that he had nothing to do with killing Jews. So that's how I uh, talked myself into looking into this whole Nazi occupation. And what you there. found, Sylvia Foti is her name. She's an author of the book, The Nazi's Grandfather. We're going to find out how she couldn't exonerate her grandpa. Instead, she wrote about him and the horrors and the Jewish fatalities therewith. Pretty compelling story. Stay with us. Tom Anderson Show. This is the Tom Anderson Show. Broadcasting live from the KVNT studios. 7 to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. Talking with Sylvia Foti about her book, The Nazi's Granddaughter, My Grandfather Was a Nazi, She Finds Out. We're going to hear in this segment how that happened. And Sylvia, so now you say I'm going to exonerate my granddad, but that doesn't happen. And I looked up the numbers in Lithuania and wow, not only was their rebellion the most prolific and famous against Nazi Germany and the Russians, but the, the, in terms of per capita or however you want to measure that statistically, the, the Jewish folks killed was high up there to kind of 60 minutes level. So what did you find? We, we know ultimately what happened, hence your title, but how, how quickly did you find this information and how difficult was it? Because I would think you don't just mosey on into Lithuania and there it is. I'm sure you really had to dig deep. I did. And, you know, even before I went to Lithuania, uh, my grandmother called me over she had survived my mother by five months, and on her deathbed, she says, uh, Sylvia, what's going on with the book? 
And I said, don't worry, uh, Grandma. I'm going to write it. I'm not going to let it go like, Mom, I'm 38 years old. I'm really young, you know, and I'm a journalist. I'm going to do it. And I thought I was comforting her. And she says, uh, don't write the book. And I said, what? And she says, just let history lie. There's no need to dig around. So I was right. I thought I remembered that. I, that's Remember I said, last segment, I said, oh, your grandmother said it. Then I thought, well, maybe your mom did. So both said that to you. Both your mom and your grandma said, maybe it's not a good time to write, or if you do, be cautious. Now, now, how did your grandma feel when you said, grandmother, I'm going to write it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very honest about it? She must have been uncomfortable no. about that. My mom wanted me to write it. My mother wanted me to write it. My grandmother did. So my mom was only two when all this happened, but my grandmother knew very well what happened is, is like the end of it. So my mom wanted me to write it. My grandmother didn't. So you were right about that. Um, but, uh, when I told my grandmother that I'm going to write it, cause I said, I promised mom on her deathbed, of course I have to write the story. And, uh, she did not like my answer. Uh, she, she was very sick. She turned, you know, to the wall and basically gave me her back, uh, letting me know that she's just tired of this conversation. And I left and that was it. And I, at that time, I still didn't know what I was going to find out. And so I thought she was just giving me a pass, you know, of like this very arduous story that my mom had been working on for 40 years. So she thought, I thought that she was just letting me off the hook as far as writing anything. But shortly after that, I did start digging in and I started little by little. It was a very gradual process at the beginning. And then of course it was an avalanche. Sure. Um, so, you know, uh, at, at the beginning, I found a brochure that he had written, and it was a very anti-Semitic brochure. He, it was called Raise Your Head Lithuanian. He was only 22 years old when he wrote it. He was already in the Lithuanian Army, and it was in 1933. So, basically, he was calling for boycotting all Jewish uh, goods, products, services, saying Lithuania's for Lithuanians, let's stop uh, buying from Jews. And it was like this for 32 pages. So when I saw that, um, I thought, well, this is not going to help me exonerate him. And, and I almost wanted to burn it as his granddaughter. But, um, you know, as a journalist, I thought, okay, well, it doesn't say kill Jews. It just said boycott. I mean, it's bad, but it's not, you know, killing. So I kind, of ta I kind of thought, well, maybe I can still, you know, exonerate him. Maybe, he, you know, he was just 22 when he wrote it. Um, but then I investigated the Nazi occupation. And during that time, the first rebellion that he led against the communists, the part of the story I did not hear was that it was part of Operation Barbarossa and that Germany had helped Lithuania get rid of the communists. And... This was the beginning of the Holocaust in Lithuania. So this other huge half of the story had never been told to me. And I, I started putting all this together. And the town where he led the, the uprising from, that first one, he was in charge. And uh, I found out that he had ordered the killing of 2,000 Jews in, just in that town. That's awful. Yeah, that's awful. And, to, to, and, and you must have shuddered at that. Oh, it was devastating. I just, you know, my wonderful hero just, uh, you know, really turned into this horrible monster. And I just, I almost couldn't cope. I almost couldn't cope. But um, somehow, you know, the journalist in me just kept saying, you gotta, you got to keep going. You got to just keep going and see what else you find out. And at this point, there was no turning ba turning back. At uh, once, you know, I went through a long period of depression, and then once I got angry, then I, the energy came back, and I and then I got, and then I said, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I don't care where it leads me. I'm well, going to find out. I want to get into. We're talking with with an author who had the courage to talk about her grandfather in an unendearing way because of, of actions that he went kind of from hero to ignoble activities, not kind of, definite. And Israeli-American Civic Action Network icon, I'm looking at 
their CEO's comments. He said the Republic of Lithuania is engaged in a cynical, dishonest, and morally bankrupt campaign to deny and distort facts about the Holocaust. And he talks about proving otherwise. How did you connect with folks in these advocacies, they're no doubt Jewish, and was there consternation towards you or was there camaraderie? Like, hey, thank you, Sylvia. Let's rock and roll and uncover all of this and report on it. God bless you for your book. Or were they suspicious of you? Like, what are you up to? Your grandpa's not the greatest guy. You're a spawn of his. We don't like you. How did you get welcomed or not to these these advocational groups that are trying to uncover where Nazis, uh, you know, had war crimes? Um, it started with one man, and then it built into many organizations now. <laughs> but uh, in 2018, now to 18 years after, you know, I finished finally writing the story after 18 years, and I put up a website because now I was trying to get published. I wanted a literary agent and a publisher. And within days, a researcher from Lithuania contacts me and says he's working for a Lithuanian uh, Jewish American um, who uh, is, uh, had launched a lawsuit against the Genocide Center in Lithuania, and they're like the arbiter of history in Lithuania who declared my grandfather a hero. He was suing that Genocide Center for Holocaust distortion because of my grandfather. So his researcher said, and by this point it was clear that, you know, I was calling my grandfather a perpetrator and, and, and not a victim. And um, so he said, you should talk to Grant Goshen. And it turns out that my grandfather was responsible for killing a hundred of Grant's relatives in the Holocaust. So I was really scared to call Grant. Um, and it took me about six weeks to summon up the courage. And I finally did by telling myself that, you know, who am I writing the book for if not for people like Grant? So uh, when we connected, uh, he was a little suspicious, to be honest. Of course. <laughs> but... Uh, pretty soon, um, you know, we started to warm up to each other. He, bo he realized I was on his side. And then, um, from there, uh, very slowly our partnership grew until where it is today, where, uh, we're on the same side together. His lawsuit at this point had gone through all the courts in Lithuania and he lost. And now he has taken it to uh, the European Court of Human Rights. Oh, boy. So he's really, he's pushing it all the way. We're, we're running out of time, and I de we're going to make a YouTube video of this. And I think I saw the video with him in that. There's some things, if someone goes to your website as well. Folks, regnaryhistory.com, you can purchase the book, The Nazi's Granddaughter. It, j it was just released, made available yesterday, March 9th. So it's an honor to get you on so quickly after that, because I'm sure you're doing the interview circuit. Her name is Sylvia Foti, and I am... Proud of you being a teacher and taking the time. I'm sure you're busy over the last, as you mentioned, two decades to really vet this and research it. I'm sure you've learned a lot and you've had a catharsis. And not that you did anything wrong, but just about familial issues and about how they unfold and how honesty certainly trumps uh, covering things up. How can someone purchase the book is the best way, regnaryhistory.com? Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome way. Another way is Amazon. Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, uh, Sam's Club... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of places. this is when any history buff, any military buff, any we have a lot of folks that are of the Jewish faith that listen and have an interest. And I have Israel in the news segments here. We're very pro Israel. So I think this this fits all of those genres and, and, and categories and, and, and people that that ultimately like the truth and so i think this is very compelling it's a human interest story and it's one of revelation for sure sylvia thank you so much for joining us i appreciate the fact that you took two segments and i look forward to reading the book myself thank you tom it was a pleasure to be here absolutely sylvia foti the name of the book, The Nazi's Granddaughter. I encourage you to go to regnaryhistory.com or Amazon or any of the online sources and purchase it. Stay with us. Tom Anderson Show.